Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a LAMP server on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, LAMP of course stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, this is a full-fledged web server which includes the um, uh, web server itself, of course, Apache web server, uh, the MySQL database for doing uh, calculations and um, uh, data manipulation, uh, and PHP, the scripting language. So with those, uh, with those things uh, on the Raspberry Pi you've got a a pretty uh, full-fledged uh, web server. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to set this up headless. Um, in our last video I showed you how to how to connect it to a TV screen and a keyboard uh, for purposes of uh, getting the thing initially configured. Once you have that initial configuration done uh, you can actually run this as a server without having a keyboard, uh, mouse, or video connected. Uh, and you can see this in the picture I've got here. I've stuck my Raspberry Pi in a little plastic case uh, pretty much the only thing I got connected to it are the Ethernet cable uh, for internet access. That goes to my uh, home router uh, and of course the power cable. Uh, and so that's what you're shooting for. Now there's one piece of information you need um, when you're setting it up before you uh, um, before you remove the keyboard and the, and the video, preferably. Uh, and that's you need to know the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Um, Raspberry Pi, when you initially set it up, uses DHCP. It gets an address from your router. You need to know what that is so you can connect to it. So the easiest way to do that, as I say, is before you, you disconnect the keyboard and monitor, uh, go out to the command line on the Raspberry Pi and just issue the command ifconfig. And in this case, this gives us the Ethernet address that we got from the um, uh, router. Uh, on, on my network here, it came out to be 192.168.1.131. Uh, so you'll need to write that down and remember it, um, make a note of it, because we're going to need to use that address to um, uh, um, connect to the Raspberry Pi uh, in order to install the server software. Uh, if you've already disconnected the keyboard and mouse and the TV screen and all the other stuff, there is one other way you can go about this. Uh, and that's to um, uh, take a look at um, uh, your router, if you can log into your router. Uh, someplace on your router uh, is a local network uh, uh, tab. Uh, it, it's going to vary where it is depending on the brand and particular menuing. But what you're looking for is this uh, DHCP client table. Uh, so you can uh, uh, click that and um, take a look at the DHCP table. This is the list of all the devices on your home network uh, that have gotten IP addresses. And you'll usually see an entry down here for Raspberry Pi. Um, if you can refresh it, if you've just plugged in the Pi, um, and this will show you the IP address of the Pi right down here. Uh, so that's another way that you can get at it. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you've already shut down the system. So once we know that address, we need a way to connect um, to the Raspberry Pi. And if you'll recall in the last video, uh, we enabled uh, SSH. Uh, and SSH, Secure Shell, is a way that you can connect in basically terminal mode uh, from, your, um, uh, from your PC on your network or a Macintosh or, or another Linux computer directly to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so if you're on Windows, you're going to need to get a program to do that. Windows doesn't generally come with a program um, already set to do that. Uh, I'm going to suggest that uh, probably the easiest one to do that uh, is to go to PuTTY, uh, P-U-T-T-Y, and that's a, a free uh, uh, SSH program you can install on your Windows machine. Uh, you can Google where to, uh, where to get it. Um, just Google um, uh, PuTTY download page. Um, I can show it to you up here, um, but you can Google it easy enough. And what you want to do is go down here to the um, uh, a Windows installer for everything except Putty Tell. Um, go ahead and click that, install that in your Windows machine, uh, and then you're going to be good to go. Um, so if you need to connect with Windows, then you want to run Putty, uh, and it's simple enough. Um, uh, load the screen here. Uh, for hostname, you put the IP address that you got um, from um, either running ifconfig or from checking your router uh, configuration. So that's 192.168.1.131. Uh, one, one I think was the one in my case. Uh, go ahead and click open. Um, and you may get a security alert. Uh, the security alert is just telling you that the um, uh, server's host key is not cached on the registry. Of course, this is going to be fine. 
uh, for you uh, because this is all on your internal network. So you, you would want to go ahead and trust the host. You can click yes um, and it'll add that key into um, a, an internal table so you don't get that message again. And then we're going to log into the um, uh, we're going to log into the um, Raspberry Pi. Remember that the login is Pi. The username is Pi. Uh, and then the password is Raspberry. R A S B B E R R Y. Um, and so here we are then at the uh, at the um, uh, prompt, um, the command line prompt on the Raspberry Pi um, that's running um, now uh, headless. Um, sitting next to your router, whatever, uh, and we're connected to it. Now, if you have a Macintosh or a Linux um, uh, rather, than a, um, uh, rather than a Windows computer, you actually have an SSH program built in. Um, uh, and, and so on the Macintosh, you need to run a terminal uh, window. Uh, and in the terminal window on that or, or in the terminal window on another Linux box, um, the syntax to connect to your Raspberry Pi is... Um, SSH space and then pi that's the username at and then we type in the uh, IP address 192 um, that 168.1.131 okay so that's the syntax um, and when we press um, when we press enter uh, we need to enter the password then um, S -B -B -E -R -Y. Uh, and we're logged in. And now, of course, you can see we actually have two logins um, simultaneously here. I'm running this through a, a, um, a virtual machine with uh, Linux loaded. But um, uh, remember that uh, Linux is a multi-user operating system, so you can have multiple logins. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to close this one out. We only need one of them. Uh, we're going to close that session. Uh, and then we're going to continue on with the um, uh, session that I initially started from the Windows machine. All right, now at this point, <clears throat> we only need to enter a few commands in order to get LAMP installed. Uh, and I'll run over those very quickly, uh, and I'll show you what they are right here. Uh, and then we just really need to just um, uh, uh, run these, uh, and um, uh, the LAMP server is going to get installed, and then I'm going to show you how to test it. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that uh, the Raspberry Pi is updated with the latest um, uh, software and access to packages. Uh, and you can do that by running the Raspi config program. Uh, that's the program that loaded uh, when you first ran configuration. Uh, and to do that, um, it's sudo raspi, R-A-S-P-I, no B, um, dash config. And that may look a little bit different um, depending on when you run it. Um, they come out with different versions of this from time to time. Uh, you're looking for the update option. Uh, and if that's not on this first screen here, uh, you can arrow down uh, perhaps to advanced options. Hit the tab key to select it. Uh, press select. And then we see the update um, is down here. So we'll arrow down to update. Uh, hit the tab key. Press select again. Uh, and then let that run. Now I've actually already run this. Uh, so it's not going to do much uh, and go ahead and, and you can watch it to see what it's going to do. Um, if, if I hadn't already run this and there were updates, this could actually take a fair amount of time. Um, it's going to download things, download packages, install them, uh, pretty much update the system to the latest and greatest. Uh, so be prepared for that to uh, 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 take some time uh, and um, uh, give it some time to complete. Now when this completes, um, it's going to come back to the um, uh, going to come back to the menu, uh, and from there we can we can um, uh, exit that and get on with the installation. So as you can see, it didn't do anything this time because I've already run it. Uh, but uh, if there are updates, uh, you want to get those uh, uh, run uh, and installed before trying to install the LAMP server. Uh, so then just tab over to uh, finish, press enter, uh, and you'll be back at the prompt. And I'm going to clear the screen now so that we can see these remaining steps. Uh, basically, we just need to install the uh, Apache software, uh, MySQL server, and a couple of PHP packages. Uh, and so it's a matter of executing these lines one at a time, making sure they complete. Uh, so we'll start here with uh, Apache server. Uh, sudo apt-get install Apache 2. We'll press Enter on that. Uh, we'll take a look and see what it does. Uh, it can ask you want to confirm. 
that you want to install this, go ahead and say yes. And it's getting the packages. I'm just going to get them installed. Uh, this could take a few minutes. That actually took four or five minutes. I had paused the recording. Uh, so now we're done installing Apache. Uh, we'll do the same thing with a MySQL server. That little typo there. I need to uh, need to include the uh, install keyword. <laughs> sudo apt get install MySQL server. And we'll get basically the same treatment as we did with uh, Apache. It asks you if you want to continue the operation, you should say yes. Uh, again, this will take uh, perhaps a few minutes, so I'll pause the recording until it finishes. Now, you will get a, a prompt in here for a new password for the MySQL root user. Um, this is a password that uh, is, is specific to the MySQL um, database administration program. So um, you can pick a password here, try to remember it if you want to pick um, uh, the same password as, as the account you, you set up Raspberry with, uh, the Pi with, and that the default password is Raspberry, you can use that one. Um, I'm going to key in uh, MySQL, that's the uh, password I usually choose for MySQL on these experimental systems. Um, of course, if you're uh, installing this live, then you want to you want to come up with a good password. Uh, but at any rate, go ahead and enter a password there, and uh, this is the password you need to get into uh, MySQL once you uh, once you start running the LAMP server. And you need to repeat that uh, just to make sure you didn't fat finger it. And as I say, uh, write that down uh, or remember it because it's. It's kind of unpleasant to have to try to recover. Well, it's not too bad. And we're back. That took, uh, again, uh, several minutes to accomplish. Uh, now we need to install uh, PHP 5. That's a scripting language. Uh, same, uh, pretty much same routine as before. Uh, so that's um, uh, sudo apt-get install PHP 5, and that installs the scripting language. It will show you what it's going to do and then ask you if you want to continue. Say yes. And again, this will take a few minutes, so I'll pause the recording while that completes. We're back, and now the last piece that we have to install uh, is the PHP 5-MySQL uh, MySQL package, and that's what provides the uh, integration of PHP 5 and uh, MySQL. Uh, so again, same routine. Uh, sudo apt-get install php5-mysql. Continue. Yes, we want to continue. I'll pause the recording one last time. And we're back. That completes the installation. Now, it's uh, strictly speaking probably not necessary here, but I think it's a good idea to reboot. You've installed a number of things. Uh, that require um, uh, demons to be running, what we call demons to be running in the background, listening in at different ports. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot, and we can do that with a sudo reboot uh, command. Uh, and keep in mind that um, um, this is actually going to kill the connection. Um, as you can see, server unexpectedly closed the connection. Remember, we're connected to the Raspberry Pi now through an SSH connection. So we're going to have to sit here and wait it out. Um, and it's going to take about uh, 30, 40 seconds for the Raspberry Pi um, to go ahead and reboot, come back up, and then we can reconnect um, with another instance uh, of PuTTY. So after you've given it a good minute or two to reboot, um, you can go ahead and run a, another PuTTY session and log back in again. And we're going to log in as pi. Password is raspberry. Now we're going to test this in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first thing we can do is run a command to see what uh, ports are open and what daemons are listening on those ports. Daemon is a, is a term for an um, uh, application uh, on a Linux or Unix system uh, whose job it is to uh, listen at a certain um, uh, port. Uh, Unix port and see if a service is running and if message messages are coming into that port. And so we can do um, netstat uh, minus ntl. 
And what we're looking for are um, these TCP ports that are listening. So we want to see port 80, that's your web server. Uh, we want to see port 22, that's your SSH server. Uh, and you want to see port um, 3306, uh, that's your uh, uh, MySQL listening port. Uh, and so when you see those, you got a pretty good idea that this is successfully installed. There are a couple of other tests you can do. Uh, the first is to go to your um, uh, host web browser, uh, the web browser on your on your PC that you're working from, uh, and go ahead and type in the uh, IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi. So we're just going to type in 192.168.1.132. Uh, and we're going to see, hopefully, uh, this uh, uh, web page that says it works, uh, the default web page for this server. This is something that Apache installs by default. Um, it's a default home page. Uh, when you see this, you know that Apache is up and running. The other thing we can do to make sure that, that um, uh, the program installed correctly, the LAMP installed correctly, is to uh, run a test on PHP. Uh, and to do that, we're going to create a, a PHP test file. Uh, we begin by uh, changing to our web directory, uh, and so uh, we're going to enter the following cd um, forward slash um, var, v-a-r, forward slash www. And what that does is that changes to the um, uh, what on the uh, Raspberry Pi is actually the, the home page of the Apache web server. Uh, and so now we're going to create a file um, called PHP info that's going to test PHP. Uh, and we do that by starting up the text editor uh, and creating a file PHP info.php. Uh, we do that this way, sudo nano, that's the text editor, uh, PHP info.php. Uh, and when the text editor opens, there's just a couple of lines that we're going to enter. Uh, we're going to start out with a less than, a question mark, uh, and the letters PHP. Uh, and that tells us that there's going to be PHP code that follows. Uh, we're only going to put in one command, and it's PHP info. Uh, it needs a couple of uh, parentheses, uh, and then a semicolon. And then we're going to close the um, uh, PHP uh, command section uh, with question mark and um, a greater than symbol. We're going to save that by typing control X and then um, Y to save the file. Uh, and now we can see that it's there. We can type ls and we can see that uh, php info.php is here in our web directory. Uh, and when we go back over to the browser, then we just leave the um, um, uh, IP address as the URL and type in php info. PHP. And if we've done everything correctly, we see a report. Uh, this is a report of how PHP is configured, all the options that are set. Uh, you can take a look at this. Um, the point is not so much what's in here, but the fact that it loads it all. If you see this screen, uh, then PHP is successfully installed. So now you have a LAMP server. Uh, what you need to do is go create your web pages. Uh, the web pages uh, by default will go in this var slash www directory. Uh, you can change those. Uh, you know, what you can do with this now that you've got it set up is a subject of a whole new series of videos. Uh, but uh, this gets you going, uh, basic configuration of LAMP server. Uh, next thing you might want to do is configure a static IP that's often done on servers. Uh, I'll show that in a separate video if you're interested. But in the meantime, uh, this is LAMP set up on the Raspberry Pi, uh, and thank you for watching.